my dear co-creators of the new paradigm. You may have heard said somewhere in the past through one or another teacher or read in a book that in order for you to become the new version of you that you may have eventually become at some point in time as we look at it linearly, you must have therefore also changed the past. So in other words, the moment you discover that you have changed in the here and now moment, which is the only moment there is, you must therefore also have changed your past, quote unquote, or the idea we have of our past to have arrived at that moment. Now, what does that actually mean? This is a really, really mind boggling concept. I had some trouble with this too, particularly when I just started channeling Arjun. I had a lot of questions about this. Now, I'm gonna give it a try in this video to explain to you my current day understanding of what this actually means. As you may know, I channel a hybrid ET, his name or the name that he has given to us to refer to him by is Arjun. My name is Vitika and I'm gonna give it my very best shot to explain to you how when we change, our past has changed too. Let's have a look at that. I made some images to attempt to explain how I currently look at the idea of our concepts of linear time and space and how all of that becomes fluid as we expand in our awareness of ourselves. So I'm going to talk about what we see when we see physical reality manifest right in front of our physical eyes as it does. I'm going to talk about what we learn to be true about that in our society nowadays, or most of us do at least. Um, and I'm going to talk about possible and probable realities. What's the difference and how does that relate to the idea of what we see unfold in front of us? And what do we dare dream of, for instance? And I'm going to talk about what the effects of all of this is on the idea of incarnations or the image that we have of incarnations in the classic sense of the word and a more modern and by that I mean new paradigm sense of the word and in between I will sprinkle a few snippets of our June channelings that have been published on this YouTube channel before and I will put the links to the sources of these videos in the description below as well. So first coming up is this image and you should be seeing this wonderful hourglass with this eye in the left side of the image staring right at the center of it. Now, the idea of this illustration is to explain how we look at physical reality crystallizing quote-unquote in front of us as it does. So from our human perspective, as we look into the world, we observe one time frame after another unfolding. Now, Literally speaking, these would be shifts that actually take place billions of times per second and these billions of times the length of time that we would be shifting through in current scientific understanding would be labeled a Planck length and I will just show in the screen right now how small a Planck length actually is. And it's literally the smallest amount of time that with our current technology and even theoretically we can come up with. So you could say that the still frames of reality that we shift through as we focus on the physical world, quote unquote, surrounding us, are each one Planck length and we see billions of Planck lengths, billions of still frames, shifting seamlessly one into another, creating the picture of the here and now moment as we perceive it in the physical world. So that's what we see. And then we're going to go to the next image. And this one is showing you what we 
are taught to believe to be true about this particular idea. That's why it also says, in the physical dimension, the experienced now creates the past, the past. This cannot be changed. This is what we're being taught to be true about that. So it's really a collective decision. We are collectively choosing, at least the majority of us, to believe that this is how it works. So as you can see in the hourglass example here, the little red dots create a specific um, path through the known past, and that path would then be yours. It's the past that you walked, it's the path that you were on, it's what you have experienced as your reality, and that's it. And there's no other realities possible for you. Contrary to this belief is what many channelers and teachers and gurus over the ages have already shared with us before, the idea that there is an infinite amount of pasts that you can actually choose from and you're not stuck to one idea in any way, shape or form. So I'm gonna just implement a little piece of our June channeling here that goes into the comparison using the imagery of train tracks. Uh, this too is an example that has been used by many channels by now. You may have heard it before, but you may not have seen it before illustrated in this particular way. So I would say, let's have a little listen to this and then we're gonna dive even deeper. You are the one that decides into what direction you will move quote unquote next, linearly speaking, which then automatically alters where you think you have a quote unquote been. All these ideas that you call the past and the future will simply change along with you. And since you are a new person in every single here and now, you are a new person with a new past and a new future. Look at it like a train changing tracks. Right after the change, now what track is right behind the train? You may think it should be the original track, but it has just shifted to another altogether. To take this step a little further, imagine a rotating plateau for trains to shift direction on. Using this rotation device, the train could choose from an entire series of train tracks, all originating from the same spot. Linearly looking at this, all of these tracks will contain the idea of a past and the idea of a future. In other words, a direction to go into and a direction to move away from. Looking at this from the perspective of the train, that is. Yet, since there is only here and now, all of them simultaneously coexist, and all of them can be accessed by you through the center point of the rotation device or your personal point of view. So really what this comes down to is that our idea of the past really just is what we say it is. And that means that we create the quote unquote effects that any particular storyline connected to a particular idea of our past, any of these effects that that may have on us, we create them too. We create them in the here and now, from the here and now, because there's no other moment from which to create anything. So if we believe that because five years back something happened, that should be influencing us today. We are creating that connection. And because we're choosing to believe that there is that connection, we create the proof that goes along with it. We create the belief that we can prove that that connection is still real and still relevant. So relevance is really what it comes down to here. Now let's dive a little deeper. In the next image, you'll see again an hourglass but this one is showing you all infinite possible realities probable realities and highly probable realities but now you see that all the red dots are flocking around the center point being the point of interaction with the universe for the observer 
So it's in that here and now interaction moment where the connection with the dimension that we are choosing to believe we are living in is being made conscious to us. We are focused on a dimension that we actually create from our own higher self's point of view, from the soul level. But depending on our beliefs and the choices we make in it, so in the, in the dimension that we are focused on, certain probable or highly probable realities flow into and out of our awareness. The idea that we are capable of jumping from a somewhat logically, quote unquote, predictable, highly probable reality to another one that comes from the, say, spectrum of the infinite possible realities seems very unbelievable to most of us. But the fact that that is actually possible for us is something that we are slowly beginning to get used to whilst we are diving deeper into quantum physics and implementing in our lives the more conscious awareness of using vibration in a more focused manner by focusing on things that we prefer and integrating things we no longer prefer in such a way that they no longer negatively influence our versions of reality. Lastly, I wanted to add here that all fragments that you see in this particular example and any others that you could imagine uh, might be a part of the even much, much bigger picture are 100% unique. So in other words, all of those little dots that you're seeing, none of them are duplicates. There are no copies of any single plank length to, to put it back into those terms again. As I understand from Arjun, there is nothing in within all that is that is not 100% unique in its own specific way. So we can create the idea or illusion of repetition, but really every single moment is completely new, completely unique. And that means that we ourselves too, in every single moment are a completely new and unique individual being. So, as you see in this hourglass, the highly probable realities are followed up immediately by probable realities, which there are many more of, and then th these are followed up by infinite possible realities. Now, everything is possible. There is a difference between what is possible and what is probable, and the probability rate of something is determined by our personal individual energy frequency as I understand it right now and we allow the most highly probable realities to manifest through us and that's when we see them and experience them in our here and now moment so that's also why this particular illustration says in the physical dimension the here and now perception allows into awareness for each individual being at any given moment, a range of most probable futures <laughs> and pasts in order of relevance to assist the overall evolution of this being. So whoever is the observer, whoever is living that here and now moment, they, they get what they can use most optimally to expand from in a spiritual sense. So let's have a look and a listen to what Arjun has to say about that. Your reality is like a pile of slightly transparent carpets overlapping, and you can hop from one carpet to the other and pick new threads to follow, new storylines to focus on in every single here and now. But none of these threads pull you in or reject you. In other words, they have no power over you. You decide what to focus on. And it is in your response by what you choose to do with these ideas and circumstances that will then open up a whole new set of perspectives for you. A whole new pile of carpets with yet new ideas and circumstances to be explored. And the more you allow yourself to do this consciously, 
the more momentum you will begin to allow in shifting your perspective automatically into the direction of your preferred reality. And as you allow yourself to consciously create more of this momentum, the more you will loosen up the fabric of the quote-unquote old carpets that you were previously focused on, so that the momentum you once may have had in that direction can eventually begin to diminish. Now there's a little wiggle room already right there because as we all know, when you recall a specific story that you understand to be a memory, we choose to share it differently usually when we've changed our feelings about that storyline. For instance, a story that hasn't been fully integrated and we keep telling ourselves is still affecting us in a negative way is often being shared in very different wordings than a story that has been integrated and that we feel we are at peace with and we will choose a very different narrative usually to then convey that story to somebody else. So right there we're actually changing the past without really being aware of what we're doing. So you could say that this is a socially accepted version of jumping timelines but we are still in the process of beginning to realize what we're actually doing, what type of magic, if you will, we're actually using in a moment when we choose to share a storyline in a more preferred manner or in a different energy frequency. So if there is an infinite amount of versions of pasts available to us, why don't we choose the one that we prefer most? As I understand it right now, that's because we pick what makes sense to our rational mind. And what makes sense to our rational mind is based on our current belief system. So if something doesn't align with our beliefs, it won't make sense and so usually we will reject it. So two words that are key here in understanding this better, at least for me, were relevance and integration. And as I understand it right now, these two really go hand in hand. So something will remain relevant as long as we are still in the process of integrating it in one way or another. So a storyline that is actually not preferred will continue to pop up in one way or another as long as it is relevant for us. And well, like I said, we need to integrate it before it stops popping up. When we've embraced something, we can allow to let it go. We can allow it to come up whenever we choose to and let it be when we don't need it. As we are expanding our multidimensional awareness, we can grasp a broader spectrum of what serves us and what doesn't. So in my personal experience and from what I understand from the Yael, with our evolution, with our spiritual evolution, we will become more capable of understanding what information is relevant to bring up in a conversation or in schooling. Um, our educational system is full of things that we believe are relevant, but if we would really look into our hearts, then we would probably come to the conclusion that they're not actually serving us. This is what happens, as I understand it now, as we expand spiritually, we will become more present in the here and now moment. That paradoxically brings us a broader spectrum awareness of our multidimensional reality. And with that comes what appears to be a type of forgetfulness, but what is actually a reflection of the amount of information that we have integrated and therefore released, so to speak. It is not clinging to us anymore. It's available when we need it, and it's just not even on the map when we don't. So it becomes more simple, but not less powerful. It's 
I also believe that we can get to a point where we remember that if we are eventually all that is, then we can choose, we can freely choose what specific aspects or what specific vibrations of all that is we wish to embody within ourselves at any given moment. So talking about that broader perspective, I made this illustration to give an idea of what multidimensional awareness might look like. So here again is the hourglass. And this time imagine it being stretched out to the left and to the right and see how that here and now perception point in the center actually becomes wider and contains several dots at once. And you may know this specific sensation of being aware of several realities at once in one here and now awareness moment. You may have an example of that in your life. For instance, when you wake up in the morning or you're in the process of waking up and your body is still asleep and your mind is still dreaming, but you're beginning to become aware again of the fact that your body is laying in a bed. So you can feel the sheets, you know you're in your bedroom, and at the same time, you're still half and half in the storyline that you're playing out on another dimensional reality. And some people may have had such experiences whilst in ceremonies with plant medicine. People may have had such experiences in a near-death experience or out-of-body experiences during their dreams, during their sleep, even during meditation. You can feel that you are oriented in a different state of awareness and simultaneously understand that your physical body is in another place. So what does all of that mean when we think of incarnation? When we use that broadened perspective of awareness, how does that affect our idea of incarnation or what is commonly called reincarnation? Okay, so here you see a linearly based <laughs> two-dimensional illustration that depicts the idea of reincarnation. And in the old paradigm point of view, these would be the lives that you had in the past, quote-unquote, and these would be the lives that you will have in the future. And then this would be your physically oriented here and now experience as you are alive on Earth today. Now, since we already understand from the earlier parts of this video that everything is actually existing here and now, what that might look like is more something like this. And then this would be a two-dimensional impression of the actual quote-unquote size of our perceived reality, including the quote-unquote flow of the idea of time and space. Obviously, we can't really speak of a size or a directional flow since everything is eventually here and now. But if this would be our reality, the one that we are choosing to be focused in right now, then all lives, future and past, that are possible on the face of this earth would be encapsulated in that. And if there are any other realities um, available for us, which obviously there are because there are an infinite amount of possible realities, then they would be wrapping around or would be held inside of this one. You can look at that in many ways. You could depict that in many ways, but this is kind of how I've got it in my own head. I see it as a huge set of infinite matryoshka dolls that you can continue to play with until the end of times because new realities continue to appear again and again and again and even spring forth one from the other and so on. So that would be closer to what reality, quote unquote reality, what existence looks like as illustrated in my impression of this idea. So back to the incarnational chart. As I understand it so far, the relevancy of, say, guides and future or past lives that quote unquote surround us are determined by the energy frequency of our personal energy field. So let's just add that idea to this picture. So as we are incarnated in this lifetime, we have a specific energy field which contains our soul themes, it contains 
lessons that on a higher level we are still curious to play out or learn something from encounters that we are yet to have and all multidimensional aspects of our greater being as our source obviously is non-physical and always flows through us and eventually contains all that is but within this individual incarnation we have an energy field that emanates a certain wavelength and with that wavelength resonate a specific amount of quote-unquote guides or a specific set of energy beings that are assisting us on our journey from the non-physical at any given time. So in this example that group of most relevant guides would look a little bit like this. They would be surrounding us most closely so they would be a perfect match to the energy fields the lessons that we are currently learning and so forth so since we shift through time and space and since with every single shift we are an entirely new human being there will be other guides relevant for us to cross connect with and so so this is a malleable team right here Arjun often says there are some in the field and some on the bench and then that too keeps fluctuating a little bit comparing it to the idea of a, of a playing field. So as we evolve there may come a time where at some point one of the guides that is, is actually quite near to us becomes less relevant and they move away and then perhaps Another guide that right now seems to be relatively quote unquote far away from us, linearly looking at this, may suddenly become more relevant and actually move in there and become one of our closer teammates, so to speak, in the game of life. And this is constantly fluctuating. The idea that you cannot detach, that you are incapable of detaching, from a specific energy overlap with a past or future life or any one of your non-physical guides is an old paradigm point of view as I understand it right now. And the idea that this can fluctuate in any given moment depending on where you are in your personal evolution that would be the new paradigm point of view for this. A really fascinating little side branch to this idea is the energy field of a person who has multiple personality disorder can entirely shift, completely shift to an entirely different type of energy field within a second. Their connections to guides around them, the composition of that can also change in the blink of an eye. Not only does that change within the blink of an eye, but also do a lot of their traits as a human being in the physical whilst they're undergoing these type of shifts. I've heard about people from one moment to the next shifting to a different type of handwriting, actually letting go of certain allergies that they might have, going instantaneously from being absolutely drunk to completely sober, having on their body physical scars or no scars, and even going from bad vision or blindness to being able to see. There's also been mentioned changes in eye color or even the appearance and disappearance, and I mean literally within seconds, of tumors that one of the personalities had and another one did not have. A few of these cases are being discussed in a book called Multiple Personality Disorder from the Inside Out. I believe that people who have multiple personality disorder are in a way showing us what is possible for us. In a way they are reminding us of in a sense, the magic of life, of our interconnectedness, of the fact that we all mirror and eventually contain each other, that everything is energy and that our reality is a lot more malleable than we think it is. They are, in a sense, quite so the embodiment of this line of thought, in my opinion. So to wrap this all up, all of these aspects are part of what I currently believe it means when somebody tells us that when you find you are a different person, your past must have changed too. I can see how when I've changed my energy frequency to allow in another set of circumstances, 
the amount of probable pasts that may have linearly led me up to that point contains an infinite amount of alternative available routes. And yes, I can see how higher dimensional beings may drop this overview concept here and there in the many reminders they provide for us so we may remember our true nature. And at some later stage in our evolution, who knows, this may just be common knowledge, but would I choose to use this concept to cheer up a friend in need of comfort by saying, hey, why don't you just shift into the version of you that was never said to begin with? Well, maybe, but only if I knew for certain that they had my sense of humor and they weren't all that sad to begin with. But otherwise, no. I feel that our experiences of sadness serve a goal and as long as we choose to feel them, these kind of emotions help us to reveal certain hidden aspects of ourselves that we can still use to grow individually and together. Call me crazy, but I like our human path of exploration. Using the relevance and integration tool as we do, I believe each and every one of us, just by being focused here in this timeline, is on a bold and powerful journey. Do I believe our species will be capable to one day grow beyond any type of needless suffering? I actually do. I believe this potential to be available as much for any individual as I do for the collective. Does this mean I go around telling people we've already shifted to a version of Earth where there never was a war? No, I don't. But I do believe we might just find each other there, as long as I fully embrace the energy of that idea whenever it naturally arises. And of course, as long as I allow my actions to be in alignment with that energy. Of course, these are just tiny examples of a much larger interconnectedness about which there is so much more to tell. But I hope that you could follow along with these illustrations and this explanation and that you enjoyed this video. Let me know how you liked it and if there are any other subjects that you would like me to dive deeper into or any questions that you may have, you are very welcome to leave them down here in the comments. I will make sure to read them and I send you so, 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 so much love. See you in the next one. Bye.